Hi everyone. There's a lot of questions and a uh, little time, so I will start by going down the list and hopefully we can get through uh, as many of them, if not all of them. Will there be a place in the app to see how much of the total supply is still available for mining? Uh, yes, yes, of course. There will be uh, on Pi Block Explorer initially and maybe in the app later. Uh, actually, there is already a place uh, uh, in the PyBlog Explorer called uh, the Circulating Supply uh, and uh, from that uh, you can uh, deduct uh, everything else based uh, on the updated white paper. Um, will the locked up Pi be included in the Circulating Supply or not? Uh, yes, based on our research so far, it seems that all, all other, in, in other blockchains, uh, the, any locked up uh, uh, balance is included in the circulating supply. Will the lockups have a countdown timer that pioneers can refer to in order to see how much time the lockup will be in effect for? Uh, yes, short answer is yes. Uh, there will be a, a list of uh, uh, all prior lockups and uh, when they expire and uh, and uh, and in, in that list you will be able to also see how the calculation uh, how they affect the calculation of the total lockup booster. Suppose I am KYC and created a wallet three days back uh, but I forgot the private key and can't create a new wallet due to the one week limit. What if my Pi balance is transferred to that recently created wallet where I don't remember the private key. Um, I guess the answer to this question is that um, because we'll have this confirmation, so uh, the person um, will just simply wait rather than, if they really lost the key, they have to wait for a week before they push the button to say, I wanna transfer to mainnet now. I wanna start being, start transferring to mainnet now. Uh, if they lose uh, the key to their wallet after they press the button, well, that's uh, that's similar to losing it at any time in mainnet. Um, yeah, there will be a process for changing your wallet uh, for future for future transfers. And I want to make it clear. I mean, that's the nature of blockchain. Mm. Um, every good thing comes with its own negatives. The fact that you have full control, non-custodial, is that uh, there is no other way you know, for, like in the case of most of our keys. And what we can do, of course, is trying to design systems that uh, try to prevent that. But the fact that it's a blockchain, it just it comes with those. Uh, it, it's benefits and it's uh, disadvantages. Mm. And a lot of people lost uh, their Bitcoin because of they lost uh, their private keys. What can they do? They can't do anything. Mm, unfortunate. Will there be a notification that will let us know in advance about the upcoming balance transfer so that pioneers can alter lock settings before the transfer is initiated and finalized in the mainnet wallet? Um, yeah, so we're thinking that uh, there will be a button to initiate the migration, as, as, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so after this button is pressed, uh, then uh, there will be continuous transfers that will be happening automatically um, based on the current lockup setting. So the lockup setting can be changed as many times as you want before you push that button. And once you push uh, that button, uh, the first transfer will uh, will ha transfers will be happening whenever they're happening. Uh, but and then if you are changing the the lockup settings, the new transfers will be getting whatever the current lock of a setting is. So there will be no, no surprise in that respect. Uh, if now in terms of uh, notifications when you receive, probably there will be notifications. There, there's currently notifications to people on the Pi browser when you receive uh, a, a trans, a, um, when you receive Pi. So in the same way, you will receive Pi and you will receive a notification that says uh, X amount of Pi arrived uh, in your wallet. Go check it out. And, uh, yeah, there will be a notification after, <laughs> at the moment of transfer. Uh, is the system geared up to only have one wallet per pioneer or will we be able to define 
and use multiple wallets inside of the app. Uh, so the initial preference we have is uh, to just have one for simplicity, but in the future we can have uh, multiple if we want. In fact, the design, I don't know if you remember, historically we initially had a different, uh, a different layout for passphrases and, um, and keys. Uh, the 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 reason which one of the reasons we changed to, to this uh, new um, system that uses passphrases uh, is because with the same passphrase you can uh, have multiple wallets and you don't need to have multiple private keys. You can have multiple Pi wallets. You can even have Bitcoin wallets if you want. So essentially, you can have whatever addresses uh, you want with the same uh, passphrase, and that's why we find this new system that we created a lot more uh, powerful. So technically, it is possible. Product-wise, let's get everyone to understand the system with just one wallet for now. And I'm sure in the years to come, there will be reasons for extending it and expanding it and uh, all sorts of connectivities and, uh, uh, you know, for, for security, for privacy, whatever reasons, people will be able to potentially create more. But I don't want to promise that uh, right now. It will all be a part of a product design. Will there be a place in the app to see how many KYC users we have in the community? Uh, yeah, the answer is maybe. Uh, the the wallets actually are publicly viewable on the blockchain anyways. So uh, at least the strict uh, subset of people who KYC and, and have already migrated to mainnet will be publicly accessible on the, on the blockchain. So you just count how many wallets uh, they are there. Um, uh, but we may come up with a, an even nicer UI, maybe somewhere in the app or on the main page that just uh, displays the count. Maybe we'll have a page that uh, displays the count of uh, KYC, KYC pioneers, the count of nodes, the count of people in you know with different uh, with different things, the amount of pie locked, uh, like different stuff. Um, but worst case scenario, just look at the blockchain and it's there. Okay, when and how will the KYC validator receive Pi rewards? Um, the short answer is when we know how much these rewards need to be. But let me let me explain and clarify. Uh, so at the moment, we're asking pioneers to pay one Pi as the cost to their KYC process. Now, this one Pi needs to cover several validation steps multi uh, that were taken by multiple people so not just one valid it's not enough that one validator says yes this is uh, correct it has to be at least uh, um, at least several there is an algorithm that decides based on how much they um, they agree with each other and who says who agrees and the previous history of its uh, va validator uh, it depends it will have either few or more valid validate or, or more consensus uh, votes essentially necessary so so the steps may include things like uh, verify that uh, this id is a valid id of the valid of the of that specific country uh, or verify that this picture matches the picture on the id or verify uh, or if the data was not if our ai algorithm was not able to extract automatically the data from the ID, then uh, uh, we need to verify that this data actually matches uh, the um, the validator. A human validator will have to like basically um, do that extraction, uh, and uh, we also may have to involve those validators with the potential name appeals that are happening uh, that pioneers have uh, uh, applied for. Um, so that they can, we can have a human, uh, like basically review every appeal. Uh, now, we need to let this process run uh, and find what is the average amount of work that happens for every um, um, for every one person who KYCs. So we have to let at least a few, several thousand uh, people finish KYCing first to get an accurate uh, estimate of that uh, number. So that then we can assign a value to how much by each one of these steps will be attributing to the validator. Uh, so for the time being, all that pie that is accumulated goes into a pool. And once we have the accurate estimate of the amount of pie that uh, um, that needs to go uh, into each piece of work, uh, we will start distributing it out. Subscribe to our Pi Whales YouTube channel and earn Pi rewards.